What's up, dudes? Chooch, back with another one. Today, I'm out here on the Bee Goat Extreme. Gonna be giving y'all a little ride across town on this thing. I wanna show you what it's like to ride this thing once you get used to it, once you get acclimated to it, and you can really whip it around like no problem at all. Uh, there's a few things I really like about this wheel. One of the things is definitely the seated riding. I really enjoy um, the whole seated riding characteristics of this machine. Um, the the height of the seat is perfect, and then also the whole the way the wheel is weighted and the way the whole setup is on it, it just really works for seated riding. And there's not a lot of wheels out there that I I really like for seated riding. I mean, it's just one of those things that I. If you look back back at my older videos, I just have never really done it much, and it's just because it doesn't feel right on a lot of wheels. With this one, with the trail riding suspension where it's kind of plush, you know, you got, got a that suspension is not really rigid like a, a lot of the other, um, you know, suspension wheels. This is a real plush suspension, so when you sit down to ride it, I mean, you it, it feels right. I mean, it really does. It feels like it's a a motorcycle with the suspension sag set up to your weight it feels exactly right and i'm running the 900 pound coil in this thing um you really you can't do big jumps and all that but i will say the seated riding because it is pl more plush um it feels fantastic so i'm gonna be doing that some of that in this video cruising around doing some seated riding um but one of my biggest tips if you're wanting to get this wheel and you're trying to do you know going from standard to seated riding is just do it quickly the faster you can shift from your standing to your seated position on this wheel it eliminates all those wobbles because what will happen is once you're once you're transferring from the standing to the seated position you'll get a slight little wobble right before your rear end makes contact with that um, with the seat so the best thing I can tell you is just literally just go do it quicker and and it'll completely knock out those wobbles you may experience uh, but I do like this wheel whenever it is on a full charge, guys. I really do trust this wheel when it is fully topped off, fully charged um, for like the first, I'd say for the first eight or so miles from full charge, which is not a lot. And I, I that's one thing I really want to point out with this wheel, guys. It is fun. It is, you know, fast whenever it is fully charged. It is powerful. But one thing to note with this, the Be Good Extreme, guys, is I really just don't trust the wheel riding it fast when it's not fully charged up i mean right here when i'm riding it this is it's fully topped off right here fully charged up fully topped off and i even i rode all the way across town and then i started going up the canyon roads up there in the mountains and i looked down and i noticed that my battery was already at three bars battery and that was in, i was about to be going up the canyon roads at a particular road that i usually go fast on that i this road whenever i go up it on the um eucs it's a lot of switchbacks it takes a while to get up it and then i usually turn around and bomb back down it i, just, I literally come full speed back down it but i noticed you know my battery was at about three bars and i chose right then and there to just turn around and stop and not go any farther and not go up the canyon not do what i was about to do because of my experience with that cutoff that i had um, you know the first week i had this machine and that is that's a a big deal man i literally can't go do uh the half the ride that i actually wanted to do on this wheel and that's just i mean it looks fun right here it looks fast it looks exhilarating it looks nimble it looks like something you definitely want to buy but i want i want people to know that you might be getting catfished by some of these people out here that are selling you this wheel um you know some of these youtubers that are doing this now uh, i'm telling you that, that some of these youtubers now man that you gotta you gotta trust these people man i'm telling you the truth on these wheels man i really am there's no benefit for me to tell you not to buy this wheel i make uh, commission sales from these videos that last month i had was the worst commission sales month i've ever had um since i started doing this basically because the one wheel i had to promote threw me on the ground and i said don't get it so i literally last month was just terrible when it comes to any type of affiliate sales with these things and i took the hit for that you know this thing throwing me on the ground first of all breaking my camera second of all i didn't even make enough money from that video of crashing to pay for the camera i broke so just letting y'all know that there's no benefit of me showing you that the thing cut off like that um but you really you need to know 
you know, it looks great. It looks like it's so much fun right here. It looks great, but I'm telling you, it, this thing, it devours battery. This C40 motor in this thing, you can ride it casually at these speeds right here, but a few miles into your ride, you're gonna look down and be like, where did all my battery go? And I want you to know that after you lose a few bars of battery or a few, you know, your voltage dips down, I'd say below shit, dude. I wouldn't ride this thing below like 111 volts. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't be pushing it, Pat, you know, riding it hard if it dropped below like 111 volts. I just wouldn't do it. And like right here where I'm sitting down cruising on it, it is fully charged up. So I want you to know that, man, like for trail riding stuff, if you're specifically going to do like a trail, like I said in that last video, where you're, you're driving to the trailhead, you're getting this thing out to go rip a few miles hard and you're done. That's what it, I mean, it really is, that's what it's for. But um, I do like, I love the way it rides. I will say that. I love the way it rides. I love the the build quality of this thing is just, I mean, it, it's one of the, you put this wheel next to all the other electric unicycles out there, and I'm telling you, like, the overall build of this thing, how it's, it seriously is all made out of metal. It, the whole thing is all metal, and it's just very appealing. Like, if you put this next to all the other plastic electric unicycles, uh, you know, all the old, you know, type of plastic shell unicycles, this thing looks way better in quality um, and the design of it. Uh, and that's one of the biggest factors I think that's appealing to many people about the Bigot Extreme is it just looks so industrial, so rugged, so much more high quality than a lot of the other machines. But that's just, man, this is the ultimate catfish wheel. Like, I mean, I 100% I am saying that. I, I like the machine. I'm telling you it's the ultimate catfish wheel because you're going to get this thing thinking, okay, Bigot Extreme, I can crank out many miles. I can go flying on this thing everywhere but i i really think that people are going to end up getting hurt on this machine because of that because they think that it, it it's called the bee goat extreme they think you can get extreme miles extreme speed extreme everything out of it but it's just not the case um you know it, but it is i'm telling you, you once you get used to, you can get used to any wheel that's the thing i want a lot of people to understand like I, I can get you see me riding the v13 you see me riding this you see me switching between all these wheels uh the transition time it takes a little bit you know you can get on any if you know how to ride an electric unicycle you can ride an electric unicycle you can switch between any of them and ride them fine but the thing is it's getting used to it guys it, it honestly it takes um, a few hundred miles to get used to any electric unicycle in a way to where you can really ride it to its full potential um, and I would even say, you know, it takes a few thousand miles to get to where you can really ride an EUC to its full potential. Um, and it's just like switching between motorcycles or something like that. Like, if I'm switching between my, my big motorcycle to, like, my little Honda Grom or something, and I've been riding the Grom for, like, you know, two weeks or whatever, all around, I'm used more used to that. And then switching to anything different, like a bigger motorcycle or you know, anything like that, it's just going to feel different. So you just need a little bit of time to learn how it, it works and the nuances and stuff. But I will say, uh, like, look at this. Like, you can see how you can, that C40 motor is powerful, dude. Like, you can break on this thing like no other. I mean, I feel so confident in riding this machine. Uh, you see me, like, cruising around on the bike pass and, you know, swerving in and out of people and all that stuff. It's because I truly feel safe and confident on, on the, this machine when it comes to that C40 motor ability to stop ability to um, accelerate quickly ability to um, you know and the nimbleness of the wheel coming from a v13 to this it's just it's so nimble i mean you can really whip this thing all around in every direction and just throw it around i mean really just throw it around and once you learn the suspension nuances and learn how to kind of preload between you know all your sidewalk transitions and stuff you don't even have to jump but having suspension is man like I'm definitely a proponent for suspension now. Like I really, I, I wouldn't be looking at buying an electric unicycle that didn't have suspension. And that's one of the big things that um, is kind of a change now is because I, I've been a huge fan of the V12s for so long. You know, the in-motion V12, um, high speed, the high torque. And I, I still think that's a phenomenal wheel. I still recommend it to, you know, first time buyers out there. But the, where you're getting into like a weird place with the V12 
is for the people that want to want to have suspension. And once you try suspension, it's really hard to to get away from it. And so I'm so glad that we're seeing the, the, the V14 uh, right around the corner, man. The, the InMotion V14 it should be coming out in December. I know that's not an ideal time to be releasing a wheel, but what that shows, guys, is that InMotion cares. If InMotion really did not care about that wheel, they would already have released it, and they would have gotten all the sales from you know the warm weather right now. Um, because it, it the EUC season is sort of coming to an end right now. You know, it the last little wave is, uh, I'd say, Thanksgiving. And after that, once it gets cold, people just aren't riding quite as much. But it shows that In Motion really does care about that uh, V14 adventure that's coming out, or it, In Motion adventure, whatever you want to call it. Because any other company, guys, would have just released the thing by now. They would have. And they would have been all about sales. They would have been all about numbers. And they would have tried to get all those sales in before you know the winter time comes but i i really do have high hopes man i think the v14 is just going to be perfect I, I hate to say that because i do like the extreme i do like it i'm not going to say i love this wheel and a lot of you know a lot of wheels i say i love them but i'll say i like this wheel i don't love it but i really think that this right here is just going to be a wheel that a lot of people are going, going to be going for based off the looks the looks quality and i know that's a weird terminology but the looks quality of this you got to admit it looks like one of the best electric unicycles when it comes down to the build quality of it the out actual look and design of it it is exceptional i'll i'll admit it if i had to go grab any of the eucs that are out right now and they're all parked next to each other based off looks alone i would probably grab this one but i want people out there to know if you're spending your hard-earned money on an electric unicycle, like if it was personally me, and I'm personally spending my hard-earned money in this economy on an, a new electric unicycle, I probably would wait. And, I, and I'm and i one of those people, I don't like waiting. You know, I, I really don't like waiting on new stuff like that. Um, if I see something that looks, you know, kind of like up the alley I'm, I'm going for, that's what I'm going to go get. But I would definitely wait, guys, and get the InMotion V14. I... I I really would. I think it's just going to be more refined. I think the thing's going to be have way more, way better battery life for the stuff we like to do. Um, this is 100%. So you see where I'm going right here, guys? I literally made it to the top of this canyon up here. And at the top of this dirt path is the road I was about to take uh, to go farther up into the mountains. And I started this ride right here, you know, about 13 minutes ago into this video no cuts or anything i started this ride at 100 percent on this wheel once i get up to the top of this little dirt path right here it's going to already have dropped two bars of battery just in that 13 minutes of riding and i'm not even kidding you that guys that is the biggest thing i want people to know about this wheel it it the ride quality is fine for that first little bit but once you get lower than that once i noticed my battery was lower I would not have continued. I, I didn't continue on any other wheel. If it would have been a V12, a V11, if it would have been, uh, I'm, I hate to go down the whole end motion path, but the V13, the, the EXN even, um, the Veteran Sherman, if any of the other wheels that I have, if I would have made it to that exact point right there, I would have kept going for sure. Cause I love that Canyon road and I love going all the way to the top of it and bombing down it. And I, that was my plan is to go to the top of this canyon road up here and then bomb down it on the extreme but i completely didn't do it because i looked at my battery level and after that first cutout i had i realized there's no way i could safely do what i was about i was planning on doing and um I, that's just something i'd want to know before buying this wheel guys i really would and i think everything out there about it um that you've seen is just it's not people that have been really doing a lot of like hardcore testing on this thing and i think that's important man when it comes to these eucs it's like it's an electric unicycle you know all of them are, are pretty decent now all of them go pretty fast all of them go pretty far all of them are you know they're electric unicycles but w what we have to be doing now is breaking this down to the nitty-gritty people people really want to know what they're buying with these electric unicycles guys and and there's a, a people the thing is man people want one wheel that can do it all 
And that's the big thing, man. People want one motorcycle, they can do it all. One unicycle, they can do it all. One bicycle, they can do it all. And that's the hardest thing, man. I, I'm telling you, once you're into this hobby, into this space, um, it's it's so hard to to tell somebody what if you're gonna get one wheel, what I what I would get. When it comes to your first EUC though, man, you really don't need to go all out. You can learn so much just with one of the basic EUCs without suspension, just one of the moderately priced ones and learn everything you need to learn. It just eats, man. This 40T just eats. All right, so quick interruption. I wanted to put this in there. I, I was not gonna add this, but I wanted to show y'all. This is where I started getting hesitant, guys. So, yo. When I started this video, I started it literally when I pressed the record button. It was when I turned this machine on from a full charge. So you've seen about 15, about almost 16 minutes now of like real world riding, pretty much uncut. And this was where I started getting, look at the battery right there. It's already at three bars, guys. I'm being 100% serious, guys. I started off with, with full charge from where, from where I started down there. I started with full charge and in 16 minutes i'm already to the point where i don't trust pushing this machine and that is the thing that people need to understand with this wheel right here and as soon as i get under power it drops a bar of battery put me at three bars so it says you know it says four right now but as soon as i i'm under power it drops to three and when it drops to three like that you just don't i mean i don't trust this thing i don't trust going fast on it at all which is a huge turnoff to this whole wheel. I mean, I really don't trust going fast on it now at all. When it flashes between four and three bars, which is like six miles into a ride, you can't ride fast anymore, dude. Like I've had fun on it up until now, but now I'm I'm not going fast on this thing. I can tell you that. I can that cut off no way in hell. So this thing's really, honestly, like. It's a fun wheel, it's built well, but it's honestly useless with the battery power it has for any type of riding, really, man. Like, I'm already down to where I can't use the thing. I'm like one bar down, flashing to the second bar down, and I can't use it anymore. That shows right there, man, like, like 1900 watt hours just gets eaten up that quick. Batteries are with this type of motor eating this, consuming this type of power. I mean, this thing really is eating power. And this right here, guys, is the biggest thing with the B Goat Extreme. And that is simply just the range you can get on this thing, guys. Now, the full range, if you were to go slow, now you were to look at the battery on that and be like, all right, now let's just put, put along or whatever, you could probably, you know, get a reasonable mileage out of it. But one thing to note on this Begoat Extreme, guys, that you're not going to see unless the YouTuber or content creator wants you to know it. And know that a lot of these people out there, guys, are trying to get affiliate sales. I'm trying to get affiliate sales. That's why I'm saying, you know, doing bad reviews like this, it hurts us, guys. It takes it takes food out of affiliates, out of these YouTubers' mouth, out of people that are trying to sell these things. It really does, guys. Um, but... I, I want to show you this guys because there is other wheels out there. There's other wheels to buy There's other electric unicycles and I do like the extreme a lot. I mean, I really have fun on it and I understand that the hardest demographic of electric unicycles to get right is going to be the trail riding wheels guys It is not an easy thing to get down. And that's why we see you know the, Look at just look at mountain bikes. Look at how expensive mountain bikes are and how like particular people are about how they like their mountain bikes to ride about how their suspension setups are people are paying like ten thousand fourteen thousand dollars for mountain bikes guys and it's just because they like every little nuance every little thing to be perfect on it and with uh, the, with eucs guys especially in the realm of off-roading and trail riding eucs it is very very hard to get right i mean if you want to faster electric unicycle that's easy if you want more range that's easy but if you want to combine all of them into a package that is just right where it's not too heavy where it has the speed where it has good suspension where it can take uh big drops but also remain plush enough to handle all the bumps on trails guys this is really actually hard to get down perfectly and i love my favorite part of electric unicycle is the trail riding i like 
like hybrid type wheels like this. You see me riding the V13 a lot. And even with the V13, I was trying to take that thing on trails and stuff. And you can do it. It is heavy, um, but there has to be a happy, happier medium, man, between something that's not 115 pounds like the V13, um, you know, something that's not like this where you can only get six miles of fast riding before you have to be like, ah, I don't know if I want to go up that road full speed. You know, there has to be a happy medium we can get to on this. And I, I really think, man, um, the in motion adventure is going to be exactly what we need. Um, I don't, don't have hands on it yet. You know, I can't tell you exactly, but I really feel like if you want to pre order a wheel, that would be the one I'd be pre ordering straight up, guys. I, I really do. I mean, obviously, it'll probably get more than six miles of. of you know fast riding out of it you know that automatically would, would be a big plus right there to get and for me guys a lot of riders are heavier than i am so this right here was even a a more um you know casual test than what a lot of people would be putting this thing through say if i had 60 more pounds of weight on me and just did that same thing i'd be even farther in the red zone when it came to battery on this you know and the only reason i'm going fast at all on this is because i'm going downhill guys i'm going coming down a mountain after looking at my batteries up there and after having that cut off there's no way i'd be going this fast up the hill um if that makes sense there's no way and, and that's just a huge kind of safety thing that people need to realize and i wouldn't have known that unless i did have that cut off so i would be unless i would have had that cut off before i'd be cruising up this mountain right now um you know at a solid tick and all it would take is this thing to go beep one time and drop me on the ground so that's just one thing i want want people to know getting a trail riding electric unicycle right is going to be hard okay and this one is not bad if you want to just get something to go crank out a quick trail with or whatever park at the trailhead go crank out a quick lap i think this is one of the best ones to do it i really i like the plush suspension it has the torque it's nimble and the build quality other than that back brake light guys this thing you could throw this thing off of a 18 wheeler into the highway and it pick it back up and cut it back on you saw this crash i had right here you see how hard this thing crashed it turned back on after that crash and i was able to ride it home so at the end of the day guys i want you to get the electric unicycle that you want uh, if this one looks like the one you want then go for it if you want if you want to get something a little bit different maybe go for the adventure go for that but i'm going to give you these real reviews if y'all enjoy these real reviews um, you know throw it a thumbs up and it whatever wheel you want to get whether it be this one whether it be any other wheel out there whether it be a pre-order or buying one today uh, use the links below guys it gives me a little kickback and helps me keep bringing you content like this but i appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one